eigentlich bin ich gar nicht begeistert von Mannmalen. The victor's corpse should be borne aloft upon the shields of those his sword has saved. And the people put together as best they could what never could again be reassembled. <laughs> to signify that never the remains of him that had won victory for Rome <laughs> should suffer injury from <laughs> rain, nor time, nor snow, nor oblivion from and the people replied it's it! with one voice the murderous corpse should be thrown to the dogs to be torn apart so that it's it! will remain of him that needlessly it's it! <laughs> Seine Schuld löscht sein Verdienst. Sein Verdienst löscht sein Schuld.
classmates and faculty members at the University of Virginia got together and put a tarp over one of the university's statues of Thomas Jefferson in order to make a statement during a protest. <coughs> the president of the university said that they had desecrated the grounds that many people considered to be sacred. Every time I go to a big like, protest of any kind, there's always that one thing, whether it's a protest or a march or whatever. We always, we always meet them in a park or something. That, and there's always this one thing that whether the organizers tell everyone not to smash police cars or whatever because they can't protect you if you're going to be doing that kind of stuff, there's always one thing that gets destroyed that nobody ever thinks about. And that is that, that is when you get a big group of people together in a park or whatever where there's grass the grass gets trampled and dies. And I don't I don't know why. I just thought of the grass. And that is why we need justice. Earth justice. To speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. It was 2013, 11 years since the political Islamist government took power in Turkey. They had been consolidating power steadily and transforming the state and the society, oppressing all sorts of non-confirming, non-conservative, not religious enough, not patriotic enough lifestyles. And as if to mark that cultural shift, they announced they were going to build this monumental mosque in the middle of the city, in this public park downtown that had been historically protected and legally preserved and been a gathering space and a home for the youth, for the LGBTQ folks, the Kurdish people, the leftists and the outcasts. They announced they were going to claim that space. So people went into protest and started squatting in the park in silence. And over the course of like a week or two, tens became hundreds. And that silent protest turned into this beautiful anarchist utopia with people coming from all sorts of backgrounds, like moderates, 
moderates, liberals, conservatives, Turkish people, young, old, straight, gay, they would all come together, set up tents. And then live. They set up this swapping market where no money will be accepted. There will be academics coming in and giving free lectures. There will be people coming in during the day and then going to work. And then there will be people bringing the food from outside. There were musicians performing during the day. There were dancers performing at night. It was beautiful. It was unsustainable. Two weeks after the protest started, police descended upon the space, evacuated the park, burned down tents, beat up people, detained the protesters. Then something snapped. Overnight, the peaceful protests turned into these violent riots with hundreds and thousands of people walking through the streets and chanting against the state violence. They would be ripping off cobblestones from the streets and throwing them at the police, burning cars, flipping them over, and smashing store windows. It was mass hysteria. There was this woman in red who would stand a foot away from the police getting tear gas in her face and then there was this naked man who would come out one night and took off his clothes and then ran naked after the police. There was a woman in black who would run up against the firing water cannon cheering with her arms in the air. There was people stealing construction machinery and then chasing down police cars with bulldozers on streets and you could watch this on the TV. There were police, there were store owners heckling protesters and then there were police and store owners and pro-government supporters running after the protesters with butcher knives and attacking them at night. It was mass hysteria. People went batshit crazy. Police went batshit crazier. They shot a lot of the protesters dead, beat up others, hit some of them with tear gas canisters in their face. This first the protest. In a moment, there was a glimpse of change in history. Then time went on. History won. The plans of building a mosque are still in the works. Nothing has changed at all.
Are you happy it's over? Berlin has been watching this monument take shape for years. Are you happy it's over? No. For sure not. I'm not a finisher. I'm a starter. It's like saying you're happy you're going to die. Endings for me are like I always say, like a woman's pregnancy. Yeah, she's happy she's had the baby, but there is a thing called post postpartum depression. Postpartum depression. That is that she is no longer carrying the baby. What is interesting to me is, just yesterday, I walked people walk into it for the first time. It was amazing. Metabolism fantasy. I want to vandalize many institutions, but the place that's the most enticing for me at this moment is the Customs and Border Protection at John Vitrell Kennedy Airport in New York City. <laughs> I have my best friends here, even family. You know, the more I travel, the more America feels like home. Who cares? Every time I go back to, yes, I'll dare to call it that way, second home. I bump into a wall. It's not the fact that borders are protected that makes me want to vandalize them. It's, it's the waiting and the growing anxiety. The monkey in my head. What if I say something wrong? No, you're fine. <laughs> well, am I? Hold on. Did I take my I-20 form from Polly with me? Oh, oh God. That would be a disaster. They're not gonna let me in without this little piece of paper. And you know, after a while, I just, I just sort of think that I, that I pry where I don't belong. You know what I would do? Yeah, you know what I would do. <laughs> I would take an axe and smash those glorious top security boots. I would knock over all the poles and into the labyrinth of lines, those annoying lines. And then I would paint all the signs, the yellow signs on the floor that say do not cross. I would paint them in rainbow. Yes. And I would crush the screens with estimated waiting time. There would be no more time to wait and no more light to stand in. And at the end, I would throw soil all over the place. There would be cherry trees everywhere. So when the fall comes, the peels cover the remains of the old world. <laughs> oh, the old world.
She begins to tear off the plastic covering of a nearby mirror, and immediately a guard sends us home. House Verbot. On the outside of the building is spray painted the words, Don't forget to go home. sort of decided that they needed a lot of soldiers for the oncoming invasion. So they selected someone from each. Oh, they drew lots. Yeah, to figure out who would represent them. Yeah, instead of everyone fighting, right? Exactly. A victor and a loser. One on each side. Huh? Because in the end, each victor and a loser end up losing in the end. To some extent. To some extent, yeah. But then they realized the people that were fighting were kind of related, right? Yeah, like... This guy was sort of kind of this guy's brother-in-law. Uh-huh. So they were like, yo, do you not want to do this, guys? <laughs> and they were like, nah, let's fight to the death. And the Croatian defeats this other guy. Right. Uh, but before he defeats him, he says, please spare me, I'm betrothed to your sister. And the Croatian says, Fuck you! <laughs> BAM! So, the Croatian just defeated this guy, and he takes the tunic of his would-be brother-in-law, and he goes back to Rome. And he's like, Woo! But, yeah. but they also, <laughs> also takes the sword on his belt. Yeah, good. Yeah. And, um, and when he gets to Rome, Kind of 
that's true. Assholes. Okay, but this is not the end of the story. People were still wondering yes. what to do with uh, Victor's corpse, right? right? So, all the people replied in one voice, the Victor's corpse should be born aloft on the shields of, 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 of those his sword had saved. And so they put together as best as they could what could never be resembled again. Murderer's head and murderer's body divided by the executioner's axe. So they bore the victor's corpse on the shields of those his sword had saved, heedless to the blood that stained their shields, heedless to the blood upon their hands. And they crowned him with the laurel that they had torn off his brow. And they closed his rigid fingers in the hilt of his dirty, bloody sword. And they crossed their naked swords upon the corpse to signify that never the remains of him that won victory for Rome should suffer injury from rain, nor time, nor snow. Nor oblivion from the human memory. And one man kneeled politely and said, I should be thrown to the dogs so we don't have to remember him anymore. A man is indivisible. And then they cut him to pieces. So I guess he is divisible. <laughs> How should you remember? He shall be called the victor over Alba. He shall be called the killer of his sister. The same tongue speaking differently at different times or differently for different ears shall have his tongue torn out. For our words must remain pure. For a sword can be broken and a man can also be broken. The words fall irrevocably into the workings of the world, leaving things noble or unknowable. And lethal to us is what we cannot know. Thus, waiting for the enemy, they feared the immature truth no longer. Set an example of pure provision for the future, not hiding the remainder that cannot be unnamed by the world. I was 
was also taught something else. There was nothing I could do about it. I was at that party in my heart. 